This module demonstrates how to record revenues, expenses, and dividends. So far, we've talked about how to record transactions that affect assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. So now let's take a look at how we'd record transactions that affect revenues, expenses, and dividends. First, we'll address whether a revenue should be recorded as a debit or a credit. Recall that we've decided that we're going to record increases to assets on the debit side and increases to liabilities and owner's equity on the credit side. Let's take a look at the income statement to see if we can figure this out. If we look at the income statement, we see that sales revenue is a number that's added into net income. So revenue has the effect of increasing net income. And if we look at the statement of retained earnings, we can see that net income is added into the beginning balance of retained earnings to get the ending balance. So the higher net income is, the higher retained earnings will be. And retained earnings is a component of stockholders' equity. So revenues increase net income, and the higher the net income is, the higher retained earnings will be, which means the higher owner's equity will be. Ergo, revenues ultimately increase owner's equity. Anything that increases owner's equity, we record with a credit. Consequently, we're going to record revenues as a credit. So now we've figured out that revenues should be recorded as credits. But we also know that every transaction has to affect at least two accounts. So when we record a revenue, we're also going to have to record an entry to another account. What account is that going to be? We can get some help on that by looking at the definition of a revenue. The definition of a revenue said that a revenue is an increase in an asset or a reduction in a liability that arises from doing what you're in business to do or your continuous and ongoing activities. That tells us that whenever we record a revenue, we also have to record either an increase in some asset account, and remember we increase assets with a debit, or a decrease in some liability account. Remember that we decrease liabilities with a debit. So when we record a re credit to a revenue account, we'll also be recording either a debit to an asset account or a debit to a liability account. Let's try some examples that deal with revenues or revenue related transactions and see what happens. On our first example, on November 2nd, SnowGo performed some snow removal services for a client and they were paid $45 in cash. So what happened is we had a revenue of $45 from doing what we're in business to do and at the same time we also had an increase in our cash account. So where we're going to record on November 2nd, 08, an increase in cash of $45 and we'll record a revenue, remember revenues are recorded as a credit, of $45. So we had a revenue and we had an increase in an asset cash. Then on November 3rd, SnowGo performed some snow re removal services for a client and billed the client for $65 payable in 30 days. Now SnowGo has done what they're in business to do, so they have a revenue and they don't have cash but they do have a right to collect cash from the client, which is an accounts receivable, and we said accounts receivable are assets. So here, we're going to record an increase in the asset accounts receivable and credit our service revenue account. On November 5th, Mrs. McGillicuddy paid SnowGo $120 in advance for snow removal services that they would do for her during the winter. So SnowGo is going to record an increase in their cash of $120. So they'll debit the cash account. Now the question is, do they have a revenue? The answer to that is no, they don't because they haven't yet done the work. And until they've completed the job or earned the revenue, they won't have one. What they do have is an obligation to do the work for her, which is a liability. And we said before that when you do a job for somebody, 
and or, or excuse me when they pay you to do a job and you haven't done it yet you have an unearned revenue so the name that we're going to give this liability is unearned revenue and we increase liabilities with a credit but remember just because this has the word revenue in it this account is not a revenue when it has the term un unearned in front of it it's a liability then on November 8th, SnowGo finished a $35 snow removal job for Mrs. McGillicuddy. So at this point in time, they've earned part of that $120 that she paid him on November 5th. When they've earned that portion, they no longer have a liability to do it. So we're going to reduce their liability, and we reduce liabilities with a debit. And for that $35, they've now earned that amount. So we're now going to record an earned service revenue by crediting the revenue account for $35. On November 10th, SnowGo was paid for services that they'd performed back on November 3rd. And so they have an increase in cash here of uh, $65. We don't want to record a revenue here because we already recorded one on November 3rd, so we'd be double recording it if we recorded it again when they got paid. But since they're being paid, they no longer have a right to collect, so their accounts receivable is going to go away. So what we want to do is record a reduction in their accounts receivable, and we reduce assets by crediting that account. Okay, we've looked at how we're going to handle revenues when they occur. Let's next take a look at how we'd handle journal entries for expenses. If we take a look again at the income statement, we can see that expenses are subtracted from revenues to arrive at net income. So expenses have the effect of reducing net income. And as we saw before, net income increases retained earnings. Since expenses cause a reduction in net income, they ultimately cause a reduction in retained earnings. And retained earnings is a component of owner's equity. So anything that reduces retained earnings will ultimately reduce owner's equity. So expenses reduce net income, which reduces retained earnings, which reduces owner's equity. So we conclude that ultimately expenses reduce owner's equity. And we saw previously that items that reduce owner's equity should be recorded as debits. So expenses will be recorded as debits. Now we know that expenses are recorded as debits, but when we record an expense, what other account is going to be affected? Let's again look at the definition of an expense, which says that it's a decrease in an asset or an increase in a liability that arises from our ongoing recurring activities. And that tells us that whenever we record an expense, we're also either going to record a decrease in some asset, which would be a credit, or an increase in some liability, which would be recorded as a credit. Okay, let's take a look at some uh, transactions that are related to expenses. On November 10th, SnowGo had the local repair shop perform maintenance on its equipment for $35, and they paid in cash when they went to pick up the equipment. So they've incurred a cost to do their ongoing or recurring activities, and when we have those types of costs, those are expenses, we can call it a maintenance expense or a repair expense, but we record expenses as a debit. So we're going to debit maintenance expense for $35. Because they paid in cash, we're going to record a reduction to their cash account by crediting cash for $35. On November 11th, they received a bill to pay for a $40 ad that they ran in the local newspaper for their services. Again, this is a cost of doing business. We'll refer to it as an advertising expense. So we're going to debit advertising expense for $40. They haven't paid it yet. They have the bill and they have an obligation to pay. And we'll call that an accounts payable, which is a liability. And we increase liabilities with a credit. Then on November 14th, SnowGo wrote a check to pay for that newspaper ad 
We don't want to record an expense again because we already recorded the expense back on November 11th. What we do want to record is that when they pay for the ad, they no longer have the obligation to pay for it. So the liability goes down by $40 and they use cash to pay for it. So their cash is reduced with a credit to the cash account of $40. On November 16th, they buy $50 of salt that they're going to use to keep the sidewalks clear. Now this is not an expense because the salt hasn't yet been used up. So what they have is something that provides them with future benefit, which is an asset. In this case, we'll call it supplies. So we record an increase in our supplies account of $50 and a reduction in cash of $50. And then on November 17th, they have a particularly bad storm that causes them to use up all the salt that they just purchased. Well, when those supplies get used up, they cease to be assets and turn into an expense. So on November 17th, we're going to record an expense by debiting supplies expense for $50, and we're going to remove those from the asset account by reducing our supplies account with a credit of $50. So revenue and expense transactions, like other transactions, are first recorded in the journal, and then they're going to be posted to the ledger or T account. If we posted the previous revenue transactions, and these were the only revenue transactions that we'd had for the period, then the revenue account would look like you see here. We'd have a beginning balance of zero. We added $45 to it on November 2nd, then $65 the next day, and $35 on November 8th. So as of the end of November, the ending balance in our revenue account is $145. If we posted the previous expense transactions, and these were the only expense transactions we had, then the expense accounts would show a balance of $35 in maintenance expense, $50 in supplies expense, and $40 in advertising expense. At the end of the fiscal period, we'd use the balances in the revenue and expense accounts to construct the income statement. Now, We've established that revenues are recorded as credits and expenses are recorded as debits. So the next question is, what do we do about dividends? Well, dividends are distributions to owners. They appear on the statement of stockholders' equity. So let's take a look at that statement. If we look at the statement of retained earnings, we see that dividends is subtracted out to come to the ending balance of retained earnings. So dividends reduce retained earnings. And retained earnings are a component of owner's equity. So by reducing retained earnings, dividends ultimately reduce owner's equity. And again, we've decided that anything that reduces owner's equity is going to be recorded as a debit so dividends, or distributions to owners, will be recorded as debits. Let's take a look at our dividend transaction. On November 30th, Snowgo distributes $100 to each of its two owners. So what we have is a distribution to owners, which is a dividend. We're going to record dividends as a debit. And it's $200. It's $100 a piece times our two owners, Bill and Alice. And they pay it in cash, so we're going to have a reduction in cash of $200. And if we posted the previous transaction, the dividends account would show us a beginning balance of zero. We added 200 to it on November 30th, so we had an ending balance of $200. And at year end, the balance in the dividends account would be used to construct the retained earnings component on the statement of stockholders' equity.